Hey everybody, this is Robert with Sigma 3 Survival, and uh, in one of our, our recent videos where I showed y'all how to clean a snake, I promised that I would I would cook one, but uh, our, our battery ran out of juice on the camcorder, so I couldn't make that happen for y'all, but uh, I've been looking around hot and heavy for a, another snake, and I found one inside this log, I just gotta get him out, so uh, bear with me, and uh, we're gonna show you the second part of that video on how to cook him up. Uh, and uh, so we're going to dig this thing out of the log and um, chop his head off, clean him, and uh, show you how to cook him. So just hold on. Better get my, my snake staff. If y'all have seen my recent review on the Crawford Survival Staff, this is, uh, this is my snake tamer. It's what I use to pin most of my snakes down. there. That's about a five or six foot long black snake. And he is fixing to be dinner. So always be careful when handling these. Even if they are non-venomous. Say hi to everybody. Goodbye. Pin him down. Cut the old head off. And there we go. So next thing we're going to do is uh, gut him just like we did the last one and uh, skin him. And then we're going to show you some uh, different methods for cooking them up, so hang with us. All right, well, we've got our, uh, our snake prepared. I chopped this down to length, uh, took the, a little bit of the tail off and a little bit towards the head area to make it fit on our spit. And... You know, a spit is a good way to uh, to cook a snake, uh, just because of the, the way the snake is. I mean, it, it works perfectly for this setup. Another another way that you can do it is you can coil it up on a grill, or you can make it to coat a fire pit and lay green logs over that and use that as a grill and set that up. Um, there's a million different ways to cook things, but um, you know, I just wanted to show you all this method because I've got a, a little bit different uh, way that I, I do a spit setup than. Uh, a lot of other people out there. Uh, one of the main problems with a spit is that you know you'll get one side of, of the object that's heavier, and it'll always tend to twist towards that side. And I'm going to show you all how to eliminate that. Um, another thing I went out and did was uh, I gathered a whole bunch of wild edibles. I uh, went ahead and picked some some wild garlic and some wild onion, and I'm going to lay that up in the middle of the of the snake uh, up in the belly. And I also gathered um, some hickory, hickory um, bark and some oak bark. And I'm going to use that to tie uh, the snake onto the spit so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't move and doesn't fall off and so forth. Um, you don't really want to use modern cordage for something like that. Like, you know, I talk a lot about trot line. You wouldn't want to use a trot line on this because it has like a tar coating and it'll give your, 
your food a different flavoring. Um, there's a lot of wild edibles out there you can add for flavoring. Uh, we're really early in the spring right now, so there's not just a ton of stuff out. But I went ahead and picked uh, basically an entire lunch as far as edibles are concerned. But uh, for spices, I've only got uh, garlic and onion. Uh, another great one is, is spice bush, uh, poor man's pepper, um, you know, just a lot of stuff out there. So just keep your eye out and, um, you know, be mindful of the stuff that's around you for, you know, uh, edible uses. So the next step is, is now that I've got my snake um, on my spit, and you'll notice my spit is, is, is forked. Um, and you'll need four uh, forked sticks for the way that I, I set up my uh, spit. Um, and we'll show you that here in a second. But the next step is I'm going to stuff the, the edibles or the, the onions and garlic into the, uh, the guts of the snake. And then we're going to wrap it and then face the snake down so that it gets the maximum amount of heat. You want to make sure that you cook these things very thoroughly uh, to get rid of any kind of disease or anything like that in it. Um, and it's real similar to fish. Uh, it even smells a little bit like fish. Same kind of consistency. Um, so let me get this tied off and uh, then we'll get it set up and, and come back and, and set it on the fire and get it cooked. Alright, so we've got our snake attached uh, to our spit and you'll notice how I tied it about every four inches uh, with a piece of hickory or oak bark. And all through the middle here is um, garlic and onions and you can chop them up finely or you can just bruise them and put them in there whole. And we've got about three feet of snake on here. I'll probably use the rest for trap bait or something like that. And, um, you know, wild onion and wild garlic uh, is a lot stronger than your store-bought versions. Um, so you don't need quite as much. So we ought to have plenty of flavor in this. There's a lot of other things you can add. But uh, this is what was available to us at this time of year. So uh, the next step is we're going to throw it on the spit. And the reason that uh, I set up my spit differently than, than you'll see most people do it is a lot of the times the problem with having a spit is that uh, with like, let's say you've got a roast that you're cooking, it always wants to turn towards the heavier side. So I've got a fork stick here, a fork stick here, and a fork stick here. And I set my, my fork stick, which is my spit, on those and I eliminate that problem. So we're going to let that cook until it's really, really well done for about uh, probably 30 minutes and I'll move it back and forth to make sure our ends get cooked real well and you just tilt these in or tilt them backwards, you know, whichever way you want to go. And uh, we'll get it real, real well done, let those veggies cook and, and the garlic, you know, infuse into the meat. And then um, I'll show y'all what kind of wild edibles I picked and uh, show you a true survival lunch. All right, well, our, our snake is all finished, and um, I'm about to start eating him. And we picked several wild edibles. Um, I've got some spiderwort here, uh, some dayflower, which is an excellent early springtime wild edible. It's very, very succulent and uh, one of my favorites. It doesn't last too long. Uh, once it starts getting real hot, it'll start to wilter and uh, fade away. But um, early springtime, it's tough to beat. Got some sheep sorrel. You can always tell sheep sorrel by kind of the uh, arrowhead tape sh uh, shaped leaves. Got some wood sorrel. And wood sorrel is like my favorite thing. It's I call it like starburst of the woods because it has like this sour burst of flavor that hits you uh, as soon as you eat it. And um, you don't want to eat too much of it, though. It's got uh, calcium oxalate in it, um, which isn't, isn't bad for you. It can just um, it can just reduce minerals out of your system if you if you consume just a massive amount of it. I got some chickweed. Um, chickweed's one of the first things that pops out in the spring. I got some cleavers. Cleavers aren't as good, but um, I munch on them from time to time. And of course, we got our garlic and our, our wild onions stuffed in the actual uh, snake. And the snake kind of reminds me of like um, like dried fish. Um, it, the size of the snake makes a big difference. 
Um, you know, like that water moccasin that we did the earlier video on uh, would have been a lot better eater because of the thickness. Um, the thinner the snake you get, the more the meat's going to dry out when you actually cook it. So it's um, it does make a difference. I like to get a thicker snake versus a thinner one. But meat's meat and protein's protein. So, um, you know, just if you're in a survival situation, it doesn't matter whether it's a fat snake or a skinny snake, you need to eat him. And they're not bad. I'm not going to sit here and tell you they're as good as venison because they're not. But um, as far as protein is concerned, protein is numero uno. And I'll just take a fork and I like to run it in between the ribs and grab the meat out. If you grill it, um, it's going to have a little bit less drying effect and the meat's a little bit easier to get off. But overall, it turned out really well. It's quite tasty. It's got a good smoke flavor to it. Um, you can taste the onions, which I love. Onions and garlic are just awesome, awesome foods as far as um, health is concerned. So, But anyways... Uh, this is how you cook up a snake, and um, I'm going to commence to finishing this thing off, and we hope that you subscribe to our videos. That's the best way to help us out, uh, to support these educational stuff that we're putting out, and we appreciate any kind of commentary, and uh, check out the rest of our videos. Thanks.